Hi, pretty geeks. Um, I have a different video planned for today, so I hope you don't mind that I'm winging it just a little bitty bit because I had an idea. Um, and the idea I had for today's video, which I um, was going to teach you something, I'm actually going to do tomorrow um, because I'm going to be at the shop all day. And I was thinking that for today, I kind of wanted to do something that was a little bit of a throwback. If you remember the very first video that I did in this room was an author spotlight. And I chose this room because I couldn't record anywhere else. It was before we even had lamps in the other room. And now we have lamps. It's just really dark. Um, and I kind of wanted to go back to that and do a little bit of a story time. So what I'm going to do is I am going to read you guys a story. And I'll have them marked in, in their own playlist. So if you want to hear it all, you can. And I will also have a link down below if you want to read along. Um, the book itself has not been published yet, but is instead released in bursts online. So I thought it would be kind of a neat way for you guys to check it out and for me to kind of share it with you. So that and any other part of it that might be, oh, my brain just shut off. Anything that ties into that, I'll also put in the box below and, you know, I'll tell you ahead of time. But, yeah, I hope you enjoy yourself and, yeah, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> she was the color of the night while I was the moon, and yet she had shone brighter than I ever could. With her shaved head and bright lips painted the color of roses, kind of wondered if they'd feel like roses, but then mine probably would have felt like thorns in comparison. I'll admit I've read romance novels for many years now, but I'd never seen a beauty on the cover like her. I've never had one make me feel like the first time she smiled past me. Yeah, past me, through me, as if I wasn't there. That's the first heartache she ever gave me. I heard her name, Esme. It's cheesy, I get it, but hear me out. I haven't been in school full time for a few years, more on that later, and suddenly it's my last year of secondary school. Mom convinced me of it, some snark line about getting out on my own without having her apron strings being extended. Don't think that she even owns an apron. Regardless, I agreed, and I'm back in the halls of tile, painted concrete, and pheromones. It seems reminiscent of primary school. The dusty cerulean tiles scuffed with grayscale streaks reflect the murmur of sounds from behind the doors. I wasn't prepared for those hurts that came pouring from behind those doors. I wasn't prepared for the roar of noise that accompanied that herd. I wasn't prepared for the goddess whose laughter sprung cleanly from the roar. I wasn't prepared for the first day. I miss the assembly. Frack. I suppose that you're now guessing, quite correctly, that that's where I first saw her. I was standing in the hall, like a complete dumbass, when the bell rang. Or the tone went off. Are there still even bells in school anymore? The stampede of fragrant bodies came and went and I just let myself be jostled as if I wasn't the new moron as I slowly melded into the wall. What am I even doing here? It seems like there was no one else singled out as pairs of eyes flashed in my direction once, then twice before disappearing down the halls and out to stairs and doors. Finally, once again at peace, I hefted my carry-all back up to my shoulder and began making my way to the large sign that said, Office. Secretary. 
strange being that may or may not be a young woman displaced from her time who is forced to age along with all the years that she missed, explaining the wistful and yet tired, very powdery lines. Or she's a rare breed of centaur, wherein she's part of the desk, explaining why she's never seen around school grounds nor on the public transport. Hair obviously made out of spider webs and copper wire. Eyes glancing at blinking lights of the phone. Either a call is incoming or these lights actually represent her heartbeat. Smile. Never wavers. Her face is frozen in this soft pseudo contentment, even during speech. Body. Made out of mushed potatoes. Some say it looks as if she's always sitting, but in actuality, her stodginess remains. My guess is that she could be riding something back there. Clothed in a sweater or sweater vest with faded appliques that were certainly brightly colored, though likely a minimum of two decades ago, and or faux gems and or faux pearls that are sewn or bedazzled on. Hands. Thin sausages that were definitely jammed down and broken while playing space basketball. She'll try to suck you into a story about her arthritis, but don't believe her lies. No one with fingernails cut below the nail bed should ever be believed. Seriously. Just picture space balls. Feet. Either flat, comfortable orthopedic shoes, or... She is actually an office fixture. Walking up to someone takes me a long time. It used to make me really paranoid. I'd be worried that my gait was noticeably awkward, if my crushes were clicking too loud, or if I looked sick, or if I didn't look sick enough for what they wanted me to be. I used to be so intent on what they were thinking until I started zeroing in on them which makes my imagination just run. I can see the comics forming in my head. Instead of worrying what they're thinking, I'm off in what my mom calls La La Land. I'm almost glad that it doesn't work all that well in crowds, because I never seem to remember where I'm going, nor what fur. B. Philippa, welcome to Brickton. I know there's so much to take in here, but you'll do just fine. We had expected you to come in earlier for a letter we sent to your home address. Oh, the smiling mouth was moving. The stumpy hands were shuffling papers. I, uh, got caught up. Dose on a bus, took a pollution break outside school grounds, stared at the spot that I'd seen the goddess until I was alone. Caught up works. Oh, no problem, no problem. Let's just not let it happen again, hmm? Right. Here's your morning packet with the rest of the forms that we did not mail out earlier this week, along with your locker number and your updated map. You shall see that it is all marked according to your homeroom group. Finally, here's your student-to-school agreement. We at Bregden have a very firm policy towards self-responsibility. Thus, we have outlined the rules in your student manual. You will be responsible for turning that into your homeroom teacher this afternoon. Any questions for me? She finished, rattling off, popping a late slip at the top of the pile. Um, no ma'am. Then I just stared at the envelope on the counter as I attempted to balance on my crutches long enough to shove it all in my bag. Okay, so let's see. What the hell am I supposed to do next? So, there's no empty desktop. But I can see one chair that isn't being sat at in the lab table built for two. I stealthily slide into place with all the grace of a fly stuck on its back. I feel tiny holes burning into me as the teacher continues speaking to the class, but looks directly at me. I picture lasers coming from his eyes, not visible to the naked eye, of course, but coursing through me. I'm going to bubble over. He's standing over me and picks up my late slip. I may just implode. He gives my shoulder the pat and squeeze and begins talking in a semi-absent fashion next to the smart board. There's no participation. There are no questions. We furiously scribble notes. A 
quiet bell tone goes off. All right, work on questions in chapter one, chapter review, only the odd numbered problems for those of you who are not late today. His book slams shut as laughter that sounds like the crinkling of candy wrappers was quieted by a second dull tone. What kind of monster teaches mathematics in the morning? So I hope you guys enjoyed the first installment of Philos Equals Lover and that you are excited to hear the next part of it when I upload it. Probably in a week, maybe, depending on what's put out there. Okay, I love you guys so, so much and thanks for stopping in. Bye-bye.